So we are reading the fifth agreement by Don Miguel. We are on page 111 of the PDF. Well, if you remember the way you used to be before you learned to speak, when you were just the rest of the, like the rest of the animals, you will see that at that time, you could communicate without words, without using your intellect, without using words. I want you to recover what you used to be long ago, to go back to the authenticity that you had before you learned to speak and experience the truth. I want you to go directly into your heart and search for the truth in words to find your authentic self and bring it out with all of your, your power. Shimangla, we can't hear you. Okay, so basically what he's trying to say here is to go back to your sensory perceptions, to be able to sense, to be able to actually feel what is being said rather than having to say it in so many words. So again, connecting with all our sensory perceptions. The highest point of your journey back to you is the moment when you finally see yourself through the eyes of truth. If you can see your authentic self, you will love what you see. You see the magnificence of your presence. You see how wonderful and beautiful you are. You see the perfection in you and this breaks any doubt that anyone else ever put in your head. You see that you are light, that you are life and when you accept your own divinity, you become a better reflection of life. So again, basically seeing yourself as you are because we all are perfection, whether we like it or not. Anything that is created is created from a sense of perfection. You are here to enjoy life. You are not here to suffer over your drama or your personal importance. It's not you. It doesn't belong to your presence. You are here to be a dreamer, to be an artist, to be a seer. But you cannot be a seer when you only have eyes to see your own story, your own wounds, your own victimization. When you are still focusing on what your mother did to you 20 years ago or 40 years ago or what your father did or what your partner did or what any of the other secondary characters in your story did to you, then you are not seeing the truth. If you are focusing on all that drama, then talking to you is like talking to a wall. Does this ring any bells someplace? So again, we need to be in the present, right? Most of the time we are either in the past or in the future. Now, if we are operating from the victim mentality or any of the control dramas, the four control dramas that we talked about in Celestine Prophecies, that was basically the intimidator, the interrogator, the aloof, and the poor me. Whenever we are the victim, we go into a poor me drama, right? Also, if you're focusing on past hurts rather than learning from them and growing with them, then we are creating a problem for ourselves. Now, if we are stuck in that, then we will never be able to grow. We'll never be able to progress. So the idea is to leave what doesn't serve us and connect with what serves us. Before you become a seer, you are far from the simplicity of life, very far from it. You believe that you know everything. You have so many great opinions and you try to impose your opinions on everybody else. Once you become a seer, everything changes. As a seer, you see people, you see what people pretend to be, what they express, what they believe they are. You know that it's not the truth. You know that everybody is just pretending. What are they pretending? 
you don't know exactly. You can't read the minds of all those secondary characters that you create. You hardly know what you're pretending. But something you can see behind all that pretending is the real person. And how can you not love the real person? Just like you, the real person comes from the infinite. The real person has nothing to do with the symbols that come from the voice of knowledge. The real person has nothing to do with any story. So as soon as we become the seer, right, we transcend whatever is, whatever the story is. We actually start seeing our authentic self. We drop the story. We drop the pretense, right? We go to the core of what is. When you become a seer, you see what is behind the story. You understand other people, but they don't understand themselves. There's no way they will understand you and they don't have to. The majority of humans don't have the awareness that you have. They don't know why they are the way they are. They have no idea. They just survive. They don't have to believe everybody, but they believe everybody anyway. They don't trust themselves at all. They have no idea how great they are. They only see their knowledge, which surrounds them like a wall of fog. Imagine being the only sober person in the middle of a thousand people who are completely drunk. Are you going to have a discussion with people like that? Do you really want to believe them? You know what that whatever they say isn't the truth. And you know this because you used to be drunk too and everything you said wasn't the truth either. So again, as soon as we start operating out of awareness, we start seeing things that others are not capable of seeing. And this is something that we keep telling people once you've done the excursion, the gateway voyage, etc. That you're going to tell people, I told you so. right? Because you can see between the lines, you can read between the lines your intuitive abilities start to get enhanced. And when that happens, then you can start seeing things that others are not being able to see. With awareness, you can easily understand how those minds were prepared to become what they are. But just because you have awareness, it doesn't mean that you are better than anyone else. Being aware doesn't make you superior. And it doesn't make you more intelligent. It has nothing to do with intelligence. Knowing this, of course, you are completely humble. You just don't care. But there are two ways of I don't care. There's the way of the victim in the dream of the first attention. And that I don't care is just a lie. Because victims really do care. And they get very hurt and injured. They have all those emotional wounds that are full of poison and a defense mechanism that says, oh, I don't care. Of course they care. And of course you won't believe that I don't care. So this is very important, right? When we are operating from a lower state of consciousness and I say, I don't care. And this happens many times. You know, I really don't care what you're doing, but you're paying attention to what the other guy is doing. That means you actually do care. When you start operating from a higher state of con uh, consciousness, you really start not caring, right? But that caring comes out of love. It comes out of compassion. It comes out of humility, not out of ego. The I don't care over here that he is referring to is coming out of ego. It is not coming out of compassion. When you're a seer, humans are extremely predictable. You can see that all humans in the dream of the victims are possessed by the main character of their story. This is their point of view, their only point of view. The way they see life is very narrow and it's narrow because their beliefs act like a mirror that only shows them what they believe. And it's obvious that it's not truth at all. They project what they believe on you and you perceive what they project on you. But 
you don't take it personally because you don't make the assumption that what they are projecting is true. You know that what they project is what they believe about themselves. And you know that because you used to do the same thing. So again, everyone perceives things through their perception, right? So the way that a per another person is perceiving you may not and is normally is not the truth. And you understand that. So when you, when you interact with those people with that understanding, your interaction with them is very different than when we interact with them without that understanding. Once you become a seer, you see everything that other artists do to themselves. But your point of view is completely impersonal. The process of unlearning takes you to a place where there's a no longer a judge and a victim in your story. It's just a story and you know that it's your creation, but it's just as if it's happening to somebody else. So you're taking a total witness attitude to whatever is happening in your life. You're not judging it and you're not taking it personally. You see all the stories, you see all the symbols, you see how people play with all of that, but it has no effect on you. It doesn't offend you because you are completely immune. You see faces, you love the faces, but you are also aware that there's something that doesn't belong to your dream. It's the personal dream that other artists are dreaming and you have complete respect for their dream, for their creation. So again, everyone is operating out of their creation, but it doesn't mean that you have to accept whatever is their creation, but you respect what is their creation. Respect is a beautiful word and it's one of the most important symbols that we can understand. Imagine that you had never heard the word before and let's make it up and agree on a meaning because just like any other symbol, we need to agree with the symbol or it won't work for us. Respect, like many of the symbols, begins with ourselves and then it goes out to everyone and everything around us. If we don't respect ourselves, how can we respect anyone or anything else? So again, self-respect, right? It's not from the ego-centered self-respect. We need to really respect ourselves. We need to respect each and every one of our cells, right? We need to respect everything around us. But if we are not respecting ourselves, then we really can't respect anything else around us. When you respect yourself, this means you accept yourself just the way you are. When you respect other people, this means you accept them just the way they are. When you respect everything in nature, the animals, the oceans, the atmosphere, the earth, this means you accept the entire creation just the way it is. When we arrive in this world, everything was created already. It wasn't our choice to see what had to be created or not. It was done and we respect it. Can we do it better? Maybe, but I don't think so. Then respect is about the complete acceptance of everything that exists just the way it is not the way we want it to be. This is more or less one meaning of the word respect. So again, respect also equal, equals complete acceptance. Once you accept yourself just the way you are, you no longer have any judgments about yourself. Once you accept everybody else just the way they are, you no longer have any judgments about them. Then something incredible happens in your world. You find peace. You are not in conflict with yourself and you are not in conflict with anyone else. All of the conflict that exists in humanity is because there is no respect. Again, if we start accepting each other as we are, then there can be no conflict anymore because we will end up respecting each other as we are. 
every war is because we didn't respect the other artists' way of life. Instead of respecting their rights, we start imposing what we believe on others. Instead of peace, there is war. So again, every, every war starts with a conflict of opinions, right? I want something, the other guy wants something else. And that's how the war starts. But if we respect each other, we care for each other, we have compassion for each other, then there would be no war. Respect is like a boundary. What we call our rights and respect go together. We have our rights just as everything that exists in the universe has its rights. We live in a world that we share with billions of other beings and respect makes it possible for all dreamers to live in harmony, to live in peace. In the dream of the second attention, we begin to create our personal heaven. And when we reach the dream of the third attention, our life is heaven. Heaven is a kingdom where we are the king or the queen. I have my personal kingdom and it's heaven. But it wasn't always heaven. It became heaven the moment that I no longer judged myself or anybody else. So again, whenever we judge, okay, we are creating hell around us because our judgment is always not the truth. It is based on a certain bias. So the more we accept whatever is, the more we start operating out of acceptance, the more in the flow we start becoming. And that's the game that we actually need to play. So in the, uh, in the David Hawkins levels of consciousness also, acceptance is in the level of, one second, acceptance is at the level of 350, which is where we actually start creating a lot of shifts in our, uh, ourselves. It became heaven the moment that I no longer judged myself or anybody else. When I decided to respect my kingdom completely and when I learned to respect everybody else's kingdom. The fifth agreement is also about respect because I respect other artists when I listen to their story. Instead of helping other artists to write their story, I allow them to write their own. So again, it's also a matter of allowing things to happen the way they need to happen. <laughs> allowing things to manifest in whichever the way they need to manifest. I will never be the one who writes your story, just as I will never allow anyone to write mine. I respect your mind, your dream, your creation. I respect whatever you believe. I respect you when I don't try to tell you how to live your life, how to dress, how to walk, how to talk, how to do whatever you do in your kingdom. As soon as I try to control your kingdom, I'm not respecting you anymore. And we are going to be in a war of control for your kingdom. If I try to control you in that intent to control you, I lose my freedom. Then my freedom is to let you be whatever you are, whatever you want to be. It's not my job to change your virtual reality. It's my job to change myself. So again, there's a story, you know, where a man is, uh, uh, has tied a rope to a buffalo and is walking in front of the buffalo. Now, is the man tied to the buffalo or is the buffalo tied to the man? They're both tied to each other. So both of them have lost their freedom to the extent that they are tied with each other. Right. Now, basically what, what, what I'm getting here is that today we have to see what we can do for ourselves, how we can change ourselves, how we can grow rather than looking at how to change the other person and constantly telling the other person what to do and what not to do. We need to see what we need to be doing. You are the king or queen of your kingdom. It's your creation. It's where you live and it's all yours. You are dreaming your kingdom and you can be intensely happy in your own kingdom. 
how first you need to respect your own kingdom or very soon that kingdom will be hell and not heaven any more second you will not allow anyone else to disrespect your kingdom whoever disrespects your kingdom is going out of your kingdom it's your kingdom it's your life you have the right to live your own life in your own way and there is no wrong way the wrong way is just another judgment that we create so again it's your dream right so you need to be on the right side of the grid in your dream if anyone pulls you to the left side of the grid in your dream you it is better to drop it so anything that puts you in the left side just get rid of it right or rehash your the way that you are looking at it or the way that thing or that person is occurring to you so that they come on to the right side of your grid so that you can create heaven in your kingdom and not hell once you have won your personal war you have no judgments about anything and other people's judgments don't affect you of course you make mistakes like everybody else but there's perfect justice in your head you pay only once for every mistake and because you are kind to yourself because you love yourself the payment is very little so again the moment you start accepting the mistakes you've made and learn from the mistakes right then there's very little payment because you have grown from that mistake you put yourself on the right side of the grid and there is no judgment you accept your mistakes and move forward you're not looking at making anyone else or or you're not even judging other people so you don't judge other people you don't allow other people to judge you perhaps these words that i'm sharing with you will all have a meaning that makes sense to that voice that lives in your head and perhaps that voice can start dreaming with this new information and decide to stop being a tyrant to stop judging you to stop punishing you the day of your last judgment could almost be here it's up to you if you can convince the tyrant to stop judging then very soon everything will change for you so again the self critic that critic which is there inside us we need to silence that critic the moment we stop judging ourselves we stop judging others that is when we connect with freedom and that's when we connect with the flow and everything just starts happening around us imagine that instead of being your adversary the tyrant becomes your ally and instead of guiding your life into drama it helps you to keep the peace when the tyrant becomes your ally it never goes against you again it never sabotages you again it facilitates whatever you want to create then the mind becomes a powerful tool of the spirit it becomes a powerful ally the result is a completely different dream your personal heaven so again what what's the meaning of this right that voice that is there behind us that record player that keeps playing what is it playing right where is that record player taking you the moment you start understanding that you start actually working with that inner voice you start uh, you you start Uh, you know make that inner voice a friend rather than a foe automatically you'll find the power that your mind will develop the kind of manifestation that can start happening with that power of the mind is truly fantastic right and then when that starts happening you start accepting everything you start understanding why something is happening and your life can become a personal heaven in the dream of heaven you completely surrender to life knowing that everything is just the way it is and because you accept everything as it is you no longer worry about anything so as soon as you accept everything as it is the fighting stops the striving stops the effortfulness stops because you've accepted everything as it is right and when you do that you don't have to fight and worry about anything again 
your life becomes exciting because there's no more fear. You know that you are. Sri Mangala, we can't hear you. Your life becomes exciting because there's no fear. You know that you are doing exactly what you are supposed to be doing, and that everything that has happened was meant to happen. Even what you consider your worst mistakes were meant to happen because they have led you to greater awareness. Even the worst thing that can happen to you is meant to happen because it's going to push you to grow. So as soon as we get into acceptance, right, we we start treating everything that happens to us as a lesson, as a stepping stone to growth, right? And this is something that I've seen in my own life. The worst thing that happened to you when it was happening to you, when you look at it in the hindsight, you will find that that is when you grew the most. And that is what the most important thing is. When you can shift getting into from a victim mentality to a growth mentality, to a seer mentality, where we start observing everything from the right side of the grid, magic can start happening in your life. What is the worst thing that can happen to any of us? To die. We are all going to die and there's nothing we can do. We can enjoy the ride or resist it and suffer. Resistance, however, is futile. We are programmed to be what we are and we can only be whatever we are. But inside our virtual reality, we can go against our own programming and that's how we create a whole world of resistance. The struggling is just the resistance and resistance creates suffering. So once you've accepted the worst that can happen, right? Once we've accepted that, and then whatever happens is better than what is the worst. So I constantly actually tell people, what is the worst that will happen? You'll die. And that itself is not in your control. So what are you worried about? Now, in a situation, what's the worst that can happen? Right? Suppose you've lost, you, there's a chance that you will lose a lot of money. Now you accept that I've lost the money. Now, the moment you've accepted it, now whatever you do is better than the worst. So it becomes easy for you to do the resistance to whatever that incident which is happening starts to drop and then we can actually do the work that we really want to do or that we are meant to do right so dropping of resistance and the struggle is extremely important to finding happiness in life when you surrender to life everything changes just like magic you surrender to that force that is coming through your body, through your mind, and it's a whole new way to see life. It's a way of being. It's being life. You are happy because you are truth. You are happy wherever you are, whatever you do. Even when you are bored, you enjoy life. Even when you create problems, you enjoy life. You are free and it's the freedom of a dream master who is not attached to the dream. So this is when we jack into the flow. We are in total acceptance of whatever is happening, right? We surrender to whatever is happening. We trust that whatever is happening is happening for the best. And when we can do that, whatever our situation is, we can be on top of the world. We can have a great time wherever we are. You hook into the dream with your attention and you unhook from it whenever you want. The outside dream wants to hook your attention and you allow it to make the connection, but you can break it at any time. From one moment to another, you can change what you are dreaming and start all over again. So all probabilities are existing at the same time, right? Wherever we pay our attention, that is where we are. So we can actually unhook ourselves from the dream that we are experiencing if it is not working for us and focus our attention on another dream. So we are creating our reality. This is something that we must understand. We cannot blame anyone for what we are experiencing.
the blame game the judgment game the criticizing game all that has to drop in every moment you make the choice of what you want to keep and what you want to let go of but not with words you don't need to make a story but you can if you want to in your story you can blame the whole world for whatever is happening to you or you can take responsibility for your story be the artist see the story and change it in whatever way that you want to change it now this is very important right today if you are blaming someone else for what is happening to you you lose power you have no power over what is happening but when we start taking responsibility for what is happening we keep the power in our hands and we can change what is happening around us because we have taken responsibility we are responsible for the reality that we are creating around ourselves it may be virtual it may be real okay now that's a question mark but it is a reality that we are experiencing and we are experiencing it because we have created it so we have the power to change it you can be rich or you can be poor it's not important you can have fame or not and it's not important to have fame in the world of darkness i don't think is fun at all to be a ruler of hell i don't think is fun but it's a choice and you can make that choice if you take responsibility for your creation you can create anything you want in your life you can rewrite your story and you can recreate your dream and if you decide to put your love into your creation you can change all the stories that used to be a drama into the most wonderful romantic comedies so again love compassion gentleness right hum humility all these things will change the story to becoming beautiful the the drama goes out of the picture love love comes into the picture so that's what we talk about again in the levels of consciousness love and above perhaps you're not finished with your story and who knows if you'll ever finish it or not honestly it's not that important whatever you do with your life is not that important whatever anybody else does with their life is not important and it's not your business hardly anything is that important but we can say that one thing is important and it's life itself it's intent by itself the creator the creation is not that important the manifestation will change day by day moment to moment generation to generation life is eternal but your dream only exists while you live in that physical body whatever you did here you won't take it with you you don't need it you never did you never will so it's the concept of the dreamer right when a dreamer awakes from a dream then the dream is no longer important so when we are creating this reality it's a dream reality we are creating it in a dream and now when we awaken when we become aware this dream is no longer important and it disappears we no don't carry anything from the dream into that wakefulness that we awaken into but this does not mean that you will not create of course you will create because it's your nature to create you are always creating you are always expressing yourself you are born an artist and your art is the expression of your spirit is the expression of that force that you are you know how powerful you are and that power is real you know what you learned and you know that all your knowledge is not real so every moment in life we are making choices and as soon as we make a choice we are creating what we are experiencing so with that we are the artist who is actually creating our reality having said that we know that at some level when we become the seer that what we are creating is just a dream it is not actual reality it is not 
who we really are. The truth is happening right in front of you. To experience life is to experience truth. To see the truth makes a huge difference in your world. To become the truth is the real goal because that is the real you. What is not truth is not important. Your desire for the truth and your love for the truth is what is important. And that is the real teaching. So again, dropping the facade, dropping all the pretense and connecting with our authentic and our true self. That is what the real goal is. The three languages, what kind of messenger are you? The fifth agreement is the most advanced teaching of the Toltec because it prepares us to return to what we really are, messengers of truth. We deliver a message every time we speak and if we don't deliver the truth is because we aren't aware of what we really are. Well, the four agreements help us to recover awareness of what we are. They help us to become aware of the power of our word. But the real goal is the fifth agreement because it takes us beyond symbology and makes us responsible for the creation of every word. The fifth agreement helps us to recover the power of belief that we invested in symbols. And when we go beyond symbols, the power that we find is incredible because it's the power of the artistic creator, the power of life, the real us. So every time we speak, we are sending a message out, right? What is the message that we are sending? Are we speaking from authenticity or are we just saying things for the heck of saying it? That's why now it becomes very important that we observe, we speak with awareness. And then the next step is we even think with awareness. That's what Robert Monroe always says, that after you've dropped the illusions, what are your thoughts and what are your actions that will determine where you are operating from? The fifth agreement is for what I call messenger training or angel training because it's for messengers who are aware that they have a message to deliver. Angel is a Greek word meaning messenger. Angels really exist, but not the angels of religion with wings. We are all messengers. We are all angels, but we don't have wings. And we don't believe in angels with wings. <coughs> the religious story about angels with wings is just a symbol and as a symbol, the wings mean that angels can fly. So we are all the representation of that one, right? That oneness, which is there. The Godhead, you can call it. Brahman, you can call it. Uh, God, you can call it, right? We are all the imprint of that thing, of that field. Let's put it in that way. So we are all actually angels. We all have that power to connect with that truth, that clarity, that uh, that light within us. Although we don't know about it consciously, but we are that light. Angels fly and they deliver information, a message, and the real message is life or truth. But there are so many messengers in this world who don't deliver life, who don't deliver truth. The world is populated by billions of messengers with or without awareness. It's obvious that the majority are without awareness. They are programmed to deliver and receive a message, but they don't know they are messengers. The majority of the humans on earth have no idea that the symbols are their own creation. They have no idea where the power of the symbols come from, which means that the symbols have complete control over them. 
So again, if you're not operating out of awareness, if you're not operating out of higher states of consciousness, then you really don't know what is happening. What kind of messengers are they? The answer is obvious. You see the consequences in the world. Just look around and you will find out what kind of messengers they are. When you find that out, the fifth agreement makes even more sense. Be skeptical, but learn to listen. What will make a difference in these messengers? The answer is awareness. That is what messenger training does for us. It helps us to become aware of the kind of message that we are delivering in this world. So again, be skeptical, skeptical, but listen, learn to listen, right? So listening is a very, very important part of communication, which we all miss. When we are talking, we are all planning as to what we are going to say next, rather than actually listening to what is being said. Now, when we start listening, we'll automatically bring awareness into our be being because we start becoming aware of what we are listening to. And then that helps us to become better messengers because we are listening to what is being said. From the Toltec point of view, there are only three ways to deliver a message. Or we can say that there are only three languages in the world of the humans. The language of gossip, the language of the warrior, and the language of truth. The language of gossip is the one that all humans speak. Everybody knows how to gossip. When we speak this language, our message is distorted. We gossip about everything around us, but mainly we gossip about ourselves. So again, making assumptions, right? When we are gossiping, we are constantly making assumptions. So it is not the truth. If we go to another country where people speak a different language, we find that it doesn't matter what symbology they use. They speak like us in the language of gossip, in what I call the big mitote, in the ordinary dream without awareness. The big mitote takes over the human mind and creates all the misunderstandings, all the distortions in the way we interpret the meaning of words. So again, as soon as we are gossiping, we are distorting everything because it's not the fact, right? We do not know if it's the truth, but we are assuming it is the truth. And that's where all the problems start taking place. From. The language of gossip is the language of the victim, is the language of injustice and punishment. It's the language of hell because all that gossip is made purely by lies. But humans will always gossip because we are programmed to gossip until something shifts inside of us and that is also in the program. This is when we rebel against the gossiping and the war begins in our head. The war between truth and lies. So again, cutting the, clearing the shaft from the grain, right? And this can only be done when we start becoming aware. That's the only way that we can actually achieve this. The second language is that of the warrior. When we speak this language, sometimes we speak the truth and sometimes we speak lies, depending on our awareness. Sometimes we believe the lies which take us directly to hell and sometimes we believe the truth which takes us directly to heaven. But we still believe which means the symbols still have the power of our belief. As warriors, we jump from one dream to the other dream. Sometimes we are in heaven, sometimes we are in hell. As you can imagine, the language of the warrior is a thousand times better than the language of gossip. But again, humans are programmed to shift the language we speak and to speak one more language. So again, we are constantly vacillating, right? We are not committed to be with the truth, right? We are observing things and as it 
it depends A anything that we are observing it depends on how it occurs to us how is it how are we becoming aware of it and then we act out of that awareness right we don't act out of the truth we we'll act as we believe what is the truth the third language is the language of truth and when we speak this language we hardly speak at this point we know of without a doubt that the symbols we use are our creation we know that we give the meaning to all those symbols to communicate with our own kind and we use symbols with impeccability the best we can to deliver our message to deliver ourselves because we are the message finally there are no more lies and there are no more lies because we have mastered awareness because we see ourselves as life as truth so again highly spiritual people they hardly speak they become the message that they want to transmute to everyone right so this becomes important in the sense that we need to start observing we need to start listening more to shift into the state of the seer rather than talking gossiping and assuming we need to start listening the language of truth is very exclusive because it's the language of the dream master the artist who has mastered the dream in the world of the master there is always music there is always art there is always beauty the master artists are always happy they are at peace and they enjoy their lives so again the language of truth is very exclusive because it's the language of the dream master right the dream master has the capability of creating anything that he or she desires and this puts us into you know tathastu that our seers used to say go this is done right and it used to be done and how did that happen because they had gone into that state of consciousness where we, they were in the third attention the attention of the seer and they had become masters to create whatever they wanted to create and when you are in that state of consciousness there is no desire because you know anything can be created everything is just there the symbolism doesn't mean anything if you want something you'll just create it like that right so then what is why i there's no reason to be sad there's no reason to be angry there's no reason to be jealous there's no reading reason to be guilty of anything right so you shift into a state of total happiness and peace the language of truth is very exclusive because it's the language of the dream master the artist who has mastered the dream in the world of the master there is always music there is always art there is always beauty the master artists are always happy they are at peace and they enjoy their lives these three ways of communicating are what i call the languages of 1 2 3 abc and do re mi the language of gossip is 1 2 3 because it's simple to learn and it's the language that everybody speaks the language of the warrior is abc because the warrior is the one who rebels against the tyranny of the symbols the language of truth is do re mi because it's for artists who have music in their heads instead of a big mitote so progression of awareness the language of do re mi is the one that i like to speak my head is always full of music because music distracts the mind and when the mind is not in the way it's pure intent i know that all that music in my head is nothing but a dream but at least i'm not thinking and making a story of so this is beautiful right the music distracts the mind and when the mind is not the in the way it is pure intent so when that chatter you know that unnecessary chatter closes down it becomes still which is something that we experience in the monro programs where your mind chatter stops and you become total still and when you intent in that stillness the probability of manifestation starts to get tremendously amplified because there is nothing contaminating the signal which is 
which is being intended right so the intent starts to manifest so so many people say that yeah once we've done and gone into that state things start to happen you're not making it happen it simply starts to happen because of this there is purity of intent there is no chatter there is no distortion in the signal that you are sending out of course i can make a story if i want to and it can be a beautiful story i can focus my attention on the symbols and use the symbols that you understand to communicate with you i can also use the symbols to hear what you say usually it is about your own story you tell me many things that you believe are true and i know they are not but when you tell me i listen and then i know exactly where you are coming from i see what perhaps you don't see i see the real you not what you pretend to be what you pretend to be is so complicated that i don't even bother to try to understand it i know it is not you the real you is your presence and it's as beautiful and wonderful as anything on this earth so again the point of listening we listen and we don't attempt to change right we we just see what is we take a witness attitude to whatever is happening and we understand that what is happening is not reality right it's maya it's something that we are just observing when you see a rose open and beautiful its very presence makes you feel wonderful you don't need to tell yourself how wonderful that rose is you can see all the beauty and romance of that rose you smell the rose and the rose never says a word you understand the message but not with words if you go to a forest you see birds talking to birds and trees talking to trees with another kind of symbology you can see the inner communication of everything around you and it's amazing there are messengers everywhere in this world but have you ever thought about it so everything in the universe communicates everything talks to us this is something that we read about in agora the left hand of god where he clearly says the universe is constantly sending us messages the universe is constantly communicating with us the point is that we need to develop the ability to perceive what is being said right and it is said without words you just it's a sense of knowing which starts to come into your reality have you ever noticed that since you arrived in this world you always been de delivering a message even before you were born when your mother became aware that she was pregnant your message was there your parents could hardly wait for your arrival for the moment of your birth they knew that a miracle was happening and as soon as you were born you delivered the message right away with no words they felt your presence it was the birth of an angel and the message was you so all of us are actually messengers we've come here to achieve something to be something to do something right and we can deliver the message by our presence that that state of being just doing and being what we were meant to do is our message enough we don't have to go on top of the rooftops and shout our message if we just be ourselves we become our message you were the message and you still are the message but you've been distorted by the reflection of other messengers it's not the messenger's fault it's not your fault and in fact it's nobody's fault the distortion is perfect because only perfection exists but then you grow up you become aware and you can choose to deliver a different message you can choose to become a better reflection of life by changing the language you speak you can change the way you deliver a message the way you communicate with yourself and with other people 
So absolutely, right? The more aware we can become, the more genuine we can become, the more into a state of being we can connect to. That is when our message gets not distorted. It becomes the pure message. I think we can stop here. Stop the recording.